Hi everybody, it's Dr. Magnifico from Jared's Velvet and Podly.com. I am here with Indy. Indy is a corgi. I have been seeing her since she was a little puppy. Um, so she's been coming to me for a little while. She um, came in today for her spay. She has gotten all of her vaccines. She's current on her preventatives and we did pre-op blood work. So the typical puppy comes in for vaccines every three weeks between eight weeks old and 16 weeks old, so four months old. And then at about six months old, we talk about spaying. We wanna make sure that they have their adult teeth. So she's got all of her adult teeth in place, that the baby tooth here has fallen out, so that's happened. Um, that all of her anatomy is in its normal position. For some of the labs, we worry about a recessed vulva, so that's something to talk about your vet and make sure everything looks like it's at its adult weight. Um, for some of the large breed dogs, we talk about maybe waiting a little while just to let all of their bones grow normally. Um, and there are there is some some information in publications about chances of or, or incidences of osteosarcoma, so so joint diseases and some cancers that maybe you want to talk to your vet about waiting a little while. But I really try to do it between six and eight weeks, six and eight months old. And after their adult teeth are present, they're at their almost adult body weight, and everything is in its normal anatomical position. Um, for, for most of my very special patients and clients, I talk to them about anesthesia and what kind of anesthesia we want to do for a spay. So she was given an IV catheter. So she has an IV catheter in. Um, we're gonna, she was done with surgery a little while ago, so we're actually gonna pull it. So she had an IV catheter placed and then we ran her on IV fluids for a little while. She was given an injectable non-steroidal anti-inflammatory this morning. And then she was given Propaflow, which is a quick, short-acting anesthetic. And it's a, one of the safest anesthetics that we've got to induce her. And then she was intubated, and then we did her spay. So her spay incision is on her belly. Um, so she was spayed today, and about probably four hours ago she was done, and this is what she looks like four hours post-op. So this is what we wanna see. She's bright, she's alert, she's not falling over, she's not ataxic, she actually got a little snack a little while ago. So this is what you wanna see when you pick up your dog from a spay. She's also going home with a non steroidal anti-inflammatory. So the same NSAID that we gave her this morning injectably, which lasts 24 hours, she's got pills to go home to start tomorrow. So she'll have four days of an NSAID. She's going home with an e-collar, so she won't lick her incision. We use either an e-collar or what's called a medical pet shirt, which is sort of a onesie. So something to protect her incision, incision so she won't lick it. And she's also going home with written instructions that kind of go over what we did and what I'm worried about and things to be concerned about and then who to contact if anything happens. So our typical spays or spay or neuter surgeries, they come in in the morning between eight and nine and they go home around dinner time. And we want them walking when they go home and bright and alert and looking like they're comfortable, calm and comfortable. I also like to talk about prices. So her spay today came up at $494. Um, there are lower cost spays out there, but they are not going to include an IV catheter and fluids and Propaflow, and they're not gonna include an e-collar and pain meds, either pre-op or post-op. So those are all things that you wanna talk about. So I'm gonna go over her bill with you guys. Her anesthesia was $125, her spay was 150. She got a nail trim, which is free, and she got her 24 hours of her injectable and said that was also free. An IV catheter is $40. Intravenous fluids is $50. A fluid pump is $25. A suture pack is $30. And then her um, go home pain medication is about $14. Um, and then the e-collar, which is about $15. So that is her her whole detailed summary. You need to ask your veterinarian what is their normal protocol. Your dog should get an exam before the procedure. You should understand what kind of induction they use. So do they give a pre-med? Do they give an induction agent? If so, how is that delivered? What does post-operative care look like? And what kind of conditions should your pet be in when you pick them up? In my opinion, there are really low cost spay and neuters out there. If that's all you can afford, then it's certainly very important to spay and neuter your dog. But talk to your vet about what the extras might be and what ideal standard of care is and whether or not that's an option that you want to pursue. Um, if you have any questions about dogs or cats or spaying or neutering or anything else veterinary related, you can find me at podly.com. If you're a client, you can find me here at Jared's Vet. Thanks and thanks to Indy's family for letting us use her as a model. Take care. Bye.